Whether you call it a UAS or a drone, this is proving to be a very valuable piece of equipment in the tower industry. Cell carriers, engineers, and vertical real estate owners are all finding interesting uses for these things. And now that the FAA rules are out, and there are several compact and very capable drones, it's easier for a tower crew to add one to their toolbox. Think about it. A drone can confirm that your climb is free of natural hazards, like bees or raptor nests. It can help you determine the tools and parts you need for a repair without climbing up to check. And in the case of a structural emergency, it can investigate the structure's integrity before you climb, or find out if it's safe to climb at all. Using a UAS carries a lot of responsibility to the safety of climbers, bystanders, tower owners, and more. That's what the FAA rules are all about. They're called Part 107, and if you fly a drone for work, you must follow them. Here are a few key parts of the rules. All drones must be registered with the Federal Aviation Administration, and you must get a remote pilot license from the FAA. Otherwise, you're free to fly up to 400 feet above ground level. But on a tower site, you can fly to any altitude as long as the drone stays within 400 feet of the tower. So Brian, this thing is awesome. Can I just go to the store, buy one, and start flying it? Essentially, yeah. yeah if you can buy those, uh, you can fly for recreational purposes. Otherwise, if you're flying commercially, there's other rules that you need to follow. And what are some of those rules? You have to have a, a remote pilot's license through the FAA. It's quite a bit of studying, but anybody can do it. You're limited to 400 foot above ground level unless you're within 400 foot of a tower. You have to watch what airspace you're flying in. If it's in restricted airspace or controlled airspace, then you need to make sure you get a waiver or permission. And so the camera's on the bottom, you're taking it up, and you can film pretty much anything you can imagine, right? Correct, yeah. You can get a lot of different information. You can do a pre-work inspection. You can figure out what tools you might need for a job, or you can do a hazard analysis beforehand. It's, it's, a, it's a great safety tool for any tower climber. Now these aren't FAA rules, but when flying near towers, remember the drone's return to home function and keep the path to home open. On a guide tower, fly vertically one face at a time, keeping between the guide paths whenever possible. On non-guide towers, just keep the aircraft between you and the tower. Always use a spotter to maintain a safe distance. Also, AM towers and FM and TV antennas have powerful close-range fields. It's best not to fly around them when they're on because they'll interrupt your control signal. Even cellular and microwave antennas can cause problems. The thing to remember is that Nate has published guidelines for UAS safety at tower sites. Go to their website and review them carefully. And be sure to comply with all FAA regulations. Moral of the story, never underestimate the power of a UAS. It may be small, but it's starting to play a big role in the tower industry. Stay safe, my friends.